Uh, so Antebellum, really the seed of what the film is or the source material is a nightmare that I had. Uh, and in that nightmare, um, Eden was trying to communicate almost across dimensions, desperate, pleading for help. And I found the nightmare so unsettling that when I awoke from it, I immediately started writing, writing down specifics around what I experienced. And the next day when I talked to Christopher about all of those details of the nightmare, that's when we decided to put pen to paper and write the short story. Um, and that short story would eventually become the screenplay that we wrote that is Antebellum. So uh, we wrote the short story the, the same day, the day after Gerard had that nightmare. And um, we were lucky enough that it got in the hands of our, our first producer, uh, Zeb Foreman, who then came to us and said, this has to be made into a film. Um, you guys need to write the script. And we had never written a script before. So we said, why can't you just have someone write it and, uh, and then we can direct it. And he said, that's not how any of this works. You guys really need to write this um, in order for it to, to get to the next step. And he said, even if it's terrible, we can try to fix it. We wrote it um, in a few weeks and, and it, we were lucky that, uh, that he said, we don't need anyone to fix this. We can, we can go out. Uh, and apparently there were a lot of studios that agreed um, about you know, the urgency of the script. Uh, we had a lot of competition. There was a lot of competition to get it. But ultimately, we landed at Lionsgate because Lionsgate with Nathan Kahane at the helm um, of motion pictures, we felt tremendous confidence that we were going to have that the support that we needed as first time feature filmmakers to get our vision from script to screen. And thank God we made that choice because we are so proud of the film that we were able to create together. And so, uh, yeah. We came to cast Chanel Monet uh, in the role of Veronica Eden through a process that is really sort of unconventional. <laughs> we hadn't thought about Janelle a, a big superstar, pop star in that role because we didn't want uh, the persona of a star to supersede that of the character in the movie. But the mystery in the way that she navigated her career over the past 12 years, she always reserved and kept something for herself. And when we saw her sitting in, I think it was the, the audience of the Grammys and she had this stoic expression on her face that could barely contain the bright furnace that was burning deep inside of her that was reaching the surface. And in that moment, that's when Christopher and I looked at each other and said, I think we found our, our Eden Veronica. I would say that the timeliness of the movie um, as, a, as a result of these delays uh, with a global pandemic that global pandemic was running on a parallel track of the pandemic of racism that has existed in this country for the past 400 years. And the latter of the two required that we not defer this much needed conversation another day. And although we had designed Antebellum for the theatrical experience, the urgency of getting the movie in front of as many people as possible now in this moment was much more important than waiting until later to get it out into theaters everywhere perhaps later in 2021. This feels like a divine time for the movie. Um, when we dated it ultimately for September 18th, unbeknownst to us that it falls on the exact date, the anniversary of the Fugitive Slave Act of 1850. And that gave us a feeling that this is what we're supposed to do.
I think Christopher and I write in a very visual and descriptive way. And I, I, I'm very proud of the script that we, that we co-created together. There wasn't any real apprehension from the cast. Uh, once they, they read it, they knew beyond a shadow of a doubt exactly what we intended to do with the movie. What we needed to do as, as filmmakers is to provide a safe space for our entire cast so that they could really ground themselves in the performances and know that they were safe, especially given the fact that we were shooting on an actual plantation, which is, you know, that's, that's, that, you know, academically it felt like it made all the sense in the world, but the reality of that experience is very, very different. And the energy on a plantation, you know, it's hollow ground, it's palpable, um, it's uncomfortable. And not to mention the fact that we were in sweltering, you know, 95 degree, 100% uh, humidity, southern Louisiana heat, um, mosquitoes that were uh, uh, of a militant sort. Uh, it was it was a difficult experience. But we felt a, a huge responsibility to the, the actors who signed on, uh, signed on for this script, and and they put their trust in us. And so you know, every day we were we were battling to make sure that exactly what was on the page uh, is what ended up on screen so that you know we could we could deliver on the promise uh christopher and i were obsessed with obtaining the lenses from gone with the wind uh, as far as we were concerned that film from 1939 was and is a horror film it just needed the time to reveal that so ultimately, when we thought about what our opening shot was going to look like, we imagined the silhouettes of those sweeping scenes in Gone with the Wind at sunset, the burnt oranges. We wanted to achieve that, that sense of familiarity from the audience when they were experiencing the film. And it was also of equal importance for us to use those lenses so that we could use the same weaponry that was meant to misinform through propaganda, really effective propaganda, that we were gonna use those lenses to then correct the record with antebellum. We opened the film with a, a five minute continuous shot um, that we, painstakingly planned with our incredible cinematographer, Pedro Loop. Um, we knew that it was gonna be a, a big undertaking and it was. Um, you know, not only is, is it a half a mile from the front of the house to the back where we conclude the shot, but we wrote the opening of the film uh, uh, to occur at sunset and the, the, the film to conclude at sunrise on a new day which is great in theory, but when you are trying to get this five minute one -er, you really only get two shots at it per day. So I think it took maybe, maybe I think it was four days on the fourth day, we finally um, were able to, to, to get this shot, which we were all ecstatic about. We're also really, um, we have to shout out our AD, Gary Marcus, because the shot is intended to feel like an opera in a sense like symphonic that we're going from this idyllic beauty in the front of the house and then we slowly transition to the horror that enables the beauty uh, in the back of the house. And so if one little thing goes wrong, we then have to start all over again. And if not for Gary Marcus, I don't know if we would have been able to achieve the shot, frankly. Uh, I, I was skeptical. Um, so it is, it is a combination of, of divine intervention Gary Marcus, Pedro Luke, uh, Christopher, and his dogged determination to stay with the shot from the, the front of the house to the back of the house. Uh, we couldn't even use the audio because he was, he was yelling for people to move uh, so that it would, that it would work. Um, so it's, it's, it's a shot that we are so immensely proud of and it was blood, sweat, and tears to achieve it. Um, you know, Christopher and I uh, have been life partners and creative partners for 12 years. The, 
the name Bush and Wrens for us is really Bush Wrens because we're a family and our families are, are united. And we intend for that name to carry through and mean something eventually for our children. And far after we leave this place, you know, the name Bush Wrens will carry on through our art and hopefully through these beautiful children that we don't yet have. But our children for now is the art that we co-create together. And we invest all of our energy and our time and we're obsessive compulsive in ensuring that the art gets out into the world in the way that it's intended. We have no interest in creating entertainment for entertainment's sake, but we also have no interest in creating preachy art or finger wagging art. We're cinephiles, we're obsessed with movies and first and foremost, we intend to thrillingly entertain in the movies that we make. And Antebellum, the movie going audience can expect it to be only the first of many uh, disorienting, thrillingly entertaining, uh, epic stories that will stir the imagination and catalyze a much needed and urgent dialogue around a whole host of issues. Within this context, it's race. We'll also deal with the environment and the climate crisis will also deal with the weaponizing of religion. And uh, we look forward to a long and uh, illustrative career as filmmakers.